live from Santa Clara, California, it's theCUBE, covering Open Networking Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Open Networking Summit uh, 2017 put on by the Linux Foundation. We're excited to have a special guest host for the next two days, Scott Rainovich. Re I, I, can I say it? He's a founder principal analyst at Futurium, which hasn't really launched. It's launching in a couple of, how many days? Uh, 10 days. 10 days, so you heard it first here on theCUBE. We love to launch companies on theCUBE. So, Thank you. Scott, looking forward to working together. I'm happy to be on theCUBE once again. Yes, Jeff. so last time when you co-hosted on theCUBE, it was here at ONS at Santa Clara, but I think it was 2014? Uh, it was at least two years ago, maybe three years ago, I think you're right. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what are you looking forward to? You've been covering this space for a long time, a lot of talk about 5G and yeah, IOT yeah. and software defined finally being here. Yep. From yep. your seat, what are, you, what are you looking at? What are you excited about? Well, I'm, I'm here to check out the buzz to see if this stuff is actually happening. I think we heard this morning that it has happened. Uh, we heard from uh, you know, Martin Casado, the founder of Nasira, one of the SDN pioneers, and he went through the whole evolution of the product, how it's now hit $1 billion of uh, revenue. Uh, that, that, that's pretty real, right? It's not More bad. Than a billion, it's not bad, yeah. A billion run rate. Then we heard, uh, we heard from AT&T, which is deploying a uh, open software-based uh, network throughout the entire AT&T network, going from 30% software defined last year to 55% is the target this year. Right. That's real, that's happening. We heard from Google, uh, again, one of the pioneers of software-defined networking, how they built their entire network on software-defined technologies, open source, they're, they're, they continue to layer in new uh, elements of software-defined networking and building it out into the WAN, building out these kind of edge data centers. So it's, it's happening across the board, there's right. no doubt. And then we've got this pesky thing called IoT that's coming down the pipe, that's right. uh, that's rapid. Right. That's it's right. really, that's right. you know, I think at Mobile World Congress, as is always the case, a lot of chat about the new handsets and 5G handsets, but really from our perspective, we think it's much more exciting to talk about the IoT impacts as Absolutely. all these connected devices are running around, Absolutely. how do they share data, edge computing, cloud computing, it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting times. Absolutely, and what's, uh, what's really interesting, I think I, I'm focused right now on looking at uh, industrial IoT, you know, how does a, a, a car uh, auto manufacturing uh, factory use sensors and devices to plug data into the cloud and then meld that with artificial intelligence if we want to throw in another buzzword. Right, right, right. You sure, know, machine how, learning, well, deep learning, yeah, there's yeah, no shortage. Exactly, what happens with <laughs> Artificial intelligence working with the Internet of Things and sensors to automate, you know, anything from controlling, you know, the temperature in a factory to, you know, telling your car where to drive. Right. 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 So lots of stuff going on. So uh, any particular announcements over the last couple of days you think we should we should highlight? Well, uh, this morning's big announcement, AT&T, um, you know, they announced a, a, a white box, live production white box uh, system. I don't know if everybody knows what that means, but basically instead of taking proprietary networking hardware, they used the chips and they used, you know, an ODM, an outsourced manufacturer to create their own boxes and load their software, you know, this new open source stuff called ONAP, and uh, that's, that's an interesting development, Jeff, because it means um, the, the operator, the network operator has now became, become their own integrator. You know, they used to go to, to Ericsson and Cisco and Juniper right, to help right. them integrate these technologies. It looks like they're becoming more of the integrator of themselves, and they're, they're buying the pieces of what they need and, and gluing it all together, much the way Google built their network. So that's an interesting trend in the fact that they announced today that this white box system is live in production is significant. So we'll have we'll have a Dave Ward on later today from Cisco, uh, many time Cube alumni, he's a great guest. But as you look at it kind of from the incumbent's point of view, you know, obviously they have a huge installed base, big sales forces, you know, a lot of, uh, of, of resources at, ba at, at to bear. How are they playing this kind of open source piece of it? How are they leveraging the proprietary stuff they have distribution and sales, yep. but still, you know, kind of being part of the party and not, not being excluded from all the excitement totally, that's going totally. on. 
Uh, well, first of all, they, they absolutely have to focus on software, you know, because the hardware is becoming commoditized and you can go buy these merchant silicon chips that are fantastic and go gigabits and you plug them in. So, uh, emphasis on software, um, and then they have to make this transition to integrate more uh, open source technologies. Um, but you know, the, the operators are still going to need partners, right? They're still going to need people to help them. And uh, you know, it's like you know, I liken it to go when you go to the to buy a car. Yeah, you drive it off the lot, but you still got all this service and support, right? You got the right. maintenance program. Right. You got to bring the car back in. You buy a warranty. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, services that go along with you know the installation of the hardware and, and the and the software. All right, Scott. Well, it should be a Great couple days. Thanks for uh, for coming down from the from the plains of Montana to join us well, they're, here they're in Santa Clara. Actually, or you're in the mountainy yeah. part. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I saw somebody a lot of talk uh, after the basketball game last night of how Eastern Washington is so different than the West. So I had kind of Spokane yeah, in my we head. Yeah, we were kind of we were going kind of going for the Zags, and that didn't happen. Well, oh. a little bit a little bit too many whistles, I think, uh, on both sides last night. Kind of slowed the whole game down, but that's a whole different conversation. He's Scott Randovich. We're here at ONS uh, 2017 for two days of coverage. You're watching theCUBE, I'm Jeff Frick. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching. Great. Robert Hershevik. People obviously know you from